1965 and 1983, Cross McGlynn and Clonagill dominated the Dalmat club scene. For 19 years, at least one of the clubs reached the county final, and on four occasions, the two teams battled it out for senior honours. Two inspirational figures on those teams were Jimmy Smith for Clonagill and Joe Kiernan for Cross McGlynn. The pair soldiered with each other for Armagh, both picking up All Stars in 1977 as the Archer County reached the All-Ireland Final for just the second time in its history. But at club level, they locked horns on numerous occasions. The two Armagh legends, Jimmy Smith and Joe Kiernan, talk me through those two decades of championship rivalries as we revisit an age-old rivalry. Clonagall versus Cross McGlynn. So fellas, we're here to talk about um, the big game we're looking ahead to, Clans and Cross McGlynn, but we're going to look backwards um, <laughs> towards the, the 70s and 80s when the rivalry all started. Um, these were both prominent players in them two teams. Um, Jimmy, I suppose to start with you. What do you remember from those those clashes from the seventies and eighties? Sixties, sixties as well. Sixties. <laughs> I think they all started in the sixties because the cross were the cross were the kings in the sixties. Cross, it, I can't remember how many championships they won, but they, they were the benchmark. And uh, the clans had actually regraded really intermediate in sixty five, won the intermediate championship, and that's coincided with three minor wins in a row, 65, 6 and 7. And that's, that pattern actually keeps moving through the clan's history, these minor championship wins. So we won three minors in a row, and a lot of that team would have been fellas who became household names in many ways. Colin McKenzie was on it, uh, Kevin France was on it, Terence McCallie was on it, uh, the O'Hagans were all on it. So well, that, that, that young group of players came through, but there was only about three of us playing in 68, and we beat Cross in the semi-final in 68, which was a big, only by a point. But uh, that was a big, big thing in, in 68. That was against all odds. And uh, then we played Flanner in the final that year and, and won the final in 68. And then met the Cross in the final the next year in 69. And the clans had adopted a policy that if you didn't train, you didn't play. So this was the, these minors then come onto the team. And uh, we moved Pat Scullion out of goals and Mickey Poland, who was only 16, went in the nets and we beat the cross that day actually gave the cross a good touch that day uh, which was very rare because you, you never beat the cross by much but because we were so young and fit uh, but the cross the cross you see the names still stand out like Joe could tell you if you ask NBA and cross by the team of the 60s uh, like the half back line was famous uh, with Pat like McCreesh and Duffy and midfield you had Gene Larkin and, and Mick McCreesh and then you had Larry up on the corner and uh, this, is, this is the early this is before this young player that came in on Kevin Hapenley Kevin Hapenley you know, and Kevin Casey was a good yeah. uh, Jack McIntyre that's right you know, all, all huge huge, huge names huge huge names so for us to win that uh, was a big thing in 69 big big thing in 69 but um, for us we met them in the final again well we might have beat them two times in a row but we were not going to beat them three times in a row and uh, there was a famous Rye out there uh, in the 70 and we lost Aidan Patterson uh, and uh, the cross won that one. Cross that one in seventy, and then we didn't meet again until seventy two. Seventy two, yeah. which actually is the last time the clans beat the cross, and we beat them by a point eight seven. And that coincided then with our run in the Ulster, which was seventy two, seventy three, seventy four. We won three Ulsters then, and uh, that was actually the big big page for the uh, the clans. And uh, but the cross went and. Regrouped, as Joe said, there. Uh, you know, we won. We were the we were the ones who were set up to be taken down. I'm proud of that have been crossed. You know, so uh, the rivalry goes back. Sort of we measure each other against each other. You know. And Joe, what, what do you remember about them games? Obviously, Jimmy Manson's the old Surge, I, I assume you're looking at, at clans, looking to take them down, and you're maybe we were jealous of them as well at that stage. Well, we we weren't winning that many Amars, never mind Ulster, so. Ulsters was a long way away, but the fact that they won Ulsters and and, and Jimmy would tell me I'm right here, they were very unlucky, should have won it all there and only they met the team in uh, Tolman College, a packed UCD, UCD. team, UCD. or UCD, we're, we're sorry, so uh, you know what I mean, uh, to totally unfair for, to them at that time, because they were at their peak, uh, but all those games were always great rivalry, you know, unfortunately there was always a bit of a skirmish, so uh, both both squads and both clubs have great history, uh, and 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 while there was a, a, a wee bit of madness about it, uh, great respect for both clubs. And what clans have done, we we we've been watching quietly 
what clans have been doing over the last 10 years with minor players bringing players through and the, the minors that won the last couple of years there great players uh, so the future is good for clans but we'll worry about some of the week first okay. and do you mention just all fair before now you had a wee skimmish with Jimmy one day and before one of the games Oh no, it wasn't before one of the games, it was in the middle of the game. <laughs> <coughs> and Jimmy was just in the wrong place and wrong. All right, all right, turned, turned, turned the wrong way for Jimmy. But the, the, there was a bit of a. The rivalry was dust always great, as we said. But there was a bit of a dust up beside the dugout. And so, you know, it was nearly hit whoever was beside you. And I turned around and banged him. The first man, he said, This is me county. <laughs> me county team made at this stage. Uh, wow. And give Jimmy a bit of a smack. But I remember two boys that played for Cross that time Donald McKenna and Paddy Quinn. Con, two corner forwards but the row only lasted about a minute and a half but the two boys arrived in when the row was over <laughs> and they were told they were told many times after that that they didn't want to be the Ross <laughs> ah yeah yeah we get there but not on the time he's supposed to get there but no and we'd always finish up shaking hands and, you know a great friends sir. I was so lucky to play with the late Conor McKinsey for so many years in Arma pure gentleman great player you know and, and his longevity Playing for clans, I looked at the photographs last week of that first minor team who won Jimmy, mm -hmm. and they're standing in the pack as a tall, skinny lad, you know, uh, and, and that was Colin, but a lovely fellow. And Colin, he, he'd have been your midfield partner, obviously, Joe, in '77, but you'd have come up against him then when you were playing club football. So, what was it like? What was it like being a midfield partnership with him, but then you were having to mark him as well? It was great, it was great when you were playing with him, but when, when Colin fully stretched he's like a big digger and when he puts the arms out he's a two foot in front of you I, I, I can honestly say I didn't do well against Colin at club level certainly without a doubt and that was just Colin big long stride the only thing is thank god he couldn't shoot <laughs> or he would have decided me all together <laughs> and Jimmy would that have been talking about in the changing rooms that Colin was going to mark Joe that was the, the tactic well we sort of worried about who was going to mark Colin you know we would never use Colin as a to mark anybody, we always use him as a target man. And if you were taking fifties and things like that, we would always put Colin at the edge of the square, you know. And then he, he as Joe said, his, his greatest strength was not in the shooting, but he was fantastic at getting up and he would uh, knock the ball down to boys, you know, going past him and things like that. He had a fantastic pair of hands, great pair. Of, like on his day, he could have outcaught anybody. Now we played Nemo in Cork, and the rumor was quite rampant afterwards that Nemo would approach Colin to. Moved down to Cork with him because he gave an absolute exhibition in the Arctic, you know. He gave exhibition to all the this, but that particular day, he was unmarkable, you know, unmarkable. Colm used to do the simple thing so well. That's right. He could actually had it gone to somebody, like Joey Donnelly with Almar, just he, he put it on a plate to Joey going past him. So he simplified his own game because he, like everybody, nobody's brilliant at everything, but when he simplified it, he was unstoppable. So. Yeah. Well, the likes of Joe, the, the rivalry and everything at club level, did it ever count, follow into county training or was there ever any or was it? No, there was always that. Yeah. No, the, this boy here was a bit like, like what Benny Taney was in, in years on. Jimmy was, a, was the one that could tell the stories on the irons and no, I don't think we ever had a, a problem at county level bitterness between players or clubs. No, we actually got on very well and that's one of the things that has stood to us all over the years. That squad of 77 and the, the wives and the girlfriend all over. When we meet at matches now, we're still still great friends, and yeah, you know, and that's lovely to see. Tell you one about that there. Go to rest, Hank Kiernan. It's Hank's funeral, and we arrived down and crossed to go to the funeral. Jim McKeown, myself, and Peter Taylor was there, and we were walking back up actually to meet the hearse. And uh, Peter sort of tells me, I says, hurry up, I says, or we'll be late. And then Peter Lahern had passed away not long before, it, and I said to Peter Taylor, uh, if this man above keeps taking these boys, I hope he continues to do it in alphabetical order. <laughs> and uh, where Paul McCurry says, hope he remembers my name's Tidsley. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the likes of Jim McCurry and that, like Jimmy's, are still close with um, all that 77 team is all still, still oh, close yeah. to this day. And as Joe yeah. said, you know, any time we have, we're called get together, which is not too often, but everybody in Verdi turns up, you know, and. Uh, we can still recognise each other. That's the thing. Yeah. Unfortunately, we lost Bird Inga Lang. That's right. And Joe Gannon, which was a yeah. very important part mm -hmm. of that whole setup too. I, I, I was actually talking to Tidji there this morning, uh, asking him was he going to the match. Tidji hasn't been well lately, uh, and I was just ringing up to keep in touch. And Sean Devon's another great man too for for, mm -hmm. for keeping in touch with everybody. 
and he said he hasn't been at that many matches this year. And I said, sure, you've got to go to the final. Oh, no, he says, I might change stuff. So I, that's the reason I want you to go. <laughs> but uh, no, no, uh, great times and great laughs. But when it comes to going on the, uh, on the field, you know, uh, great fellas. And there's another great guy, Dennis Stevenson. Mm -hmm. I remember one day. Is this, is this uh, thing, Dennis is it? I think he's on yeah. Botox or something. Not this year. But Dennis thinks he, he could still play. He looks as young. But uh, one day we were playing Kerry in the National League over in, in David Park. And Dennis was always very bouncy in the dressing room before. He, and he had the tugs or he had the socks and boots on, the shirt on. And I said, Dennis, are you ready for this? I am, Joe. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I said, you better put your tugs on. <laughs> <laughs> but Dennis would, would be, that's just the way Dennis was. Oh, uh, uh, Secondly, turn lead. Secondly, turn lead. Yeah. And Jimmy, that that minor team that you were part of that come along, and obviously you said that that's sort of a nearly a tradition in Flans that these minor teams sort of come along, and we've seen one coming now. And Joe said that Cross have sort of been keeping an eye on this this yeah. Flans team coming along. Like, well, the one prior to that was the early nineties would have been Barry O'Hagan, Kevin O'Hagan, and David Mars. They won three in a row, and then we won two championships, ninety four and ninety five. After that. So this present squad, uh, I, I'm not saying that there's not a lot of uh, trust being put on at the minute because they're still very, very young. But there's a couple of boys who have come through, young Callum O'Neill has come through, James Ross has come through, uh, the Lennons, you know, and, and some other, and there's nobody better than bringing teams on on the cross, you know. And, and the important thing is that if you're bringing young fellas on, you need experienced men alongside them. There's nobody throwing a whole squad of young fellas, so the Fergie did it, but uh, there's no good in throwing a whole squad and you need people there to look after them so to speak and uh, that, that's what this the, the older boys Soup and John McCarran are, are able to do at the minute you know Nell Hans has said this so minors are very very important and, and that's one thing about the clans at the minute that our strength is in our underage because an awful lot of work has gone on and there's 53 coaches looking after our underage teams which would have been unheard of years ago we only had Harry McGuire in those days you know you know, so uh, it's, it's very, very promising, and it's great to see them there. And it's great, well, put this way here it's great to see youngsters anywhere on the football field, it doesn't matter what club they belong to, you know, that's important. And for us, um, we do underage as well, too. Yeah, we've been very lucky, you know, and the one thing that, that brings new parents in, you know, more people in to support the club is you, you can see some of the new faces and the old faces, like my, my own children when they come through and that. But uh, no, it gives the club uh, the club a lift, and uh, it, then when you go and win a, a minor title, it makes an awful difference to those young people that you know they've won something early on of of, of real importance with the next step as senior. That's right. Just to, just to go back to the cross for a second. I remember I was actually working with the beat at the time on the radio, radio also, and I was sent to cover a, a championship match, and I can't remember who the cross were playing, but I do distinctly remember opening up my report by saying that the clubs in Armagh would need to watch out because this is a different style of football across the ground. I'll tell you, you remember the year, Arthur McAvoy got his leg broken that year. Oh, right. And I think he's won the championship of the following year, so maybe it was 96 and then around the mid-90s. 97. 97. Mm. And, uh, 96, yeah. So it was it, a good time for the final year after not being in one final for 10 years. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, there's that whole change of, you know, across where all this additional catch and kick team. But then your man came along and sort of changed that style, you know, and that's the style I've stuck with slightly successfully ever since, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> and Joe, that, that 96 game actually I've got noted down that that's, that's what started the cross dominance was beating clans in a final. In 96, you, you beat them well, I think. Um, we did, but the year before that, Mullaban beat us. Yeah. And Mullaban, being cheeky enough, not only won it out of but went on to win it out. But which really annoyed us. We, we, and fair play to Mullaban. They won it because they deserved to win it, but that really put it up to us. And I remember when we were starting back uh, the following year, and you know, I, I'm a great believer if you're hurting, there's always more in you, you know. And if we hadn't been hurting, it, it was no good, but we were hurting and we started off the, the campaign that year. We went okay in the league, but we struggled in a couple of the championship matches. I remember we played, I think it was Sarsfields out here, and we won 9 6. Very lucky to beat them, and then Mullerman was next uh, but they totally refocused for the Mulliband match and uh, winning that Mulliband match I remember we scored five or six points without a play at the end and that's what I was looking for you know even even though you don't play well you can still win these matches and then it becomes a habit that you know uh, 
and the people believe in it and they do it automatic. I, I used to talk about Fergie team and I used to talk about Munster rugby and it, all the teams that come back from, from, from bad losses and then started to win and then started to win at the end in matches. Uh, and it, it, it's a great trait to have. Uh, and then just the one the first all Ireland, we were beaten the following year and I never seen as many people crying in all my life that day. And I had the system said, This is great, these boys are, you know, really hurting about this so we quietened it down and, and, and started back the following year and um, we talked about the hurt okay. you, re you remembered and, and that led to another run for a couple of years but uh, just like Jimmy would tell you when a group of people come together you know the, the, it's unbelievable I remember those young boys winning at the Mosney games and 11 of the players that played in the Mosney games about four years before or five years before four, but four years before all went on to play for cross and then the longevity of these boys, like Paul Hurley, mm -hmm. 20 championship medals, Ashin, 17, 18, you know what I mean? What so, about you, fella? Yeah, he's, 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 he's 18 at the minute, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> he says he's not staying for 20, so this is very important. Tell him 18 used to be the big number, forget about 21. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the like Aaron is just, you know, heavy sticks and heavy, heavy come back this year, I was surprised, but he, he just loves it. and. He knows his own body, and he, he keeps himself fit. And he's just a reassurance, uh, reassuring figure for all the other players on the field when he's there. We got Orange, the obvious one, Joe, that I was going to mention. That he's an obvious connection to the seventies rivalry. Yeah. He's had with the fans. Is there any other on both sides? Is there any whatever fathers and grandas and whatever else? Good question. Yeah. I don't think so. I, I was actually looking at the clan saying there's no links going back. I think think I'm sure as soon as I walk out the door, I remember somebody, but. Uh, not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of, I tell you the truth. Yeah. And those games at that time, I know Jody was sort of saying off where the Trans won most of them, but there was a couple of finals, maybe they only beat his by a point or two points, like while, while Trans was the dominant team, really. You were, you were so close, it's just a couple of times you couldn't get over the line against them. But that's, in the history of the GEA, that's what happens. You know, in county football, you had Dublin and Kerry, you had Mayo and Kerry, you had Mead and Dublin, and in, in club football, you you, you have us and cross or us and and, and plans, and they seem to be come at, come together, and it's tit for tat, like a man's a own another one, you know. So two groups of players come together, and there's never much in it. There's always only a kick of a ball. So it could have went either way. The worst losses are all of the point. Oh yeah. yeah. You don't mind getting well. You don't like getting stuffed at the time. At least after you say as well, it was a bad time, but a point. But the best win. Oh, that's my point. Yeah. Right. Because by winning the right. 10 points, you learn not that's to right. players right. or not nothing. Because the other team obviously threw the down in. But a point, you know, both teams went head to head. And it's just a flick of a ball or a slip or a mistake or, you know. Yeah. So the cousin talks about the All Ireland of 2002. He keeps his carry boy going. And he said, I'm sure it's tough to you. Carry boy says, You made a bad point. You never forgot it, he says. You didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. I mean, that 77 finally has played with Cross that they won after replay, I think they won by five points. Um, was that a tough one to take after coming off the back of them couple of old students? It was played very late on. It was way, I think it was about October by the time they got the whole thing going. The weather was unbelievable. That's it? right, that's right, it was indeed. But I remember I actually scored a goal from a 50, which was disallowed in the drawing game. And uh, then at the end of the draw, and then the Cross. Did pull away and not uh, and not replay, you know. But uh, and it went injury. It went extra time. That's right. Yeah. I remember Hank coming on. Lot of mercy on Hank. Hank always a good story. But Hank came on wing half forward, and it, it, it was a real. As I said, it was a real half team. I think it was. Buck Hank Pass. was a county man at this stage. Pop class was playing wing half back. He was your captain. Oh, chat. Oh, chat. They were close to that. But but. But. I just looked at him now in the second period of injury time in a hot summer's day the, the game was level and Hank just looked at him and knew he was near knackered but the effort that he put in come on come on son he says let's you and me go for a little run so Hank took him down to the bottom of the field sprinting took him back up to the top of the field and I think Hank said I would go with three points after that he run mentally Hank was very astute though uh, well, I, that he, 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 he could he could size you up and know how to, how to break you he was a county miner at that time too, like, you know, he was a land machine, yeah. 
on Jimmy, we, we mentioned Joe was marking Colin McKinstry most of them days. Who would you have been marking from the cross side? Would it have changed every year? Or? Uh, but it was usually Tom McGrish. Yeah, yeah. Tom McGrish. Uh, and 68 and 69 and 70, and then it was Tom McGrish. Uh, I'm probably 72 as well, because I was playing centre half forward in those days. Later on, I moved to centre half back. But uh, no, Tom McGrish would have been my man at the time, you know. And how did you get on with, with him? Well, it's a long day on, but uh, I, I would have been pointing out afterwards that the, the picture that people have of Tom Cruise being a very fair, clean footballer like, <laughs> didn't tie with me crawling up the stairs after a penny final, you know? <laughs> and the, the, the connections we sort of spoke about, like the connections between the, the, cl the clans team then and now with the miners coming through, trying to take down cross, like there's a lot of... There's a lot of connections from the, the minor team you were on, Jimmy, and the successful clans team you were on, yeah. to this clan, the Gill team now, trying to take down Cross, who for the well, Kingpins. Well, you see, the, the same thing applies to the minors as to the seniors. You know, the, the clans, I think the clans beat the Cross in two minor finals, you know, so the, the, both teams are always there or thereabouts. And uh, we were in the doldrums for a while, but every team, well, not every team, most teams have cycles. These boys just keep paddling <laughs> on. But uh, most teams have cycles, you know, and, and it's. It, fluctuates and it goes with the, the, the people. Chris Brown came out with a great line one time, he said, you can only dance with the girls in the room, you know. And <laughs> it's the same thing with your team, you can only pick the, play, the players who are there. Now, if you've got a good structure and you've a good broad pick, then your chances of success improve them. So that's the theory behind it, you know. But, but this rivalry was started years ago and this rivalry will go on for years to come. You know, whenever times have, have players coming through or cross streets coming through, it's still going to be here. It's one of those great rivalries now, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and in the history of the association. So the clans was in '49, I think. Was against the cross. The first championship. First championship of the ones from '49 yeah. against Cross McLean, you know. So it goes back a long time. Some of us were just about born then. <laughs> <laughs> and Joe, you, you'd said earlier about the great rivalries, like you mentioned Dublin and Kerry. Like this is the. The Dublin and Kerry of Armagh club football, isn't it? Cross and Clans meeting. Without a doubt, you know, two most successful clubs in the county. Mm. You know, and and, and I, I I know there's going to be a big crowd. A lot of neutrals are talking about coming to see this match. And you have already played, obviously, in the yes first round. That's so right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something yeah. till yeah, and based on. we were playing fairly well early on, and, and looking like coasting, and then all of a sudden it's a draw game. You mm. know, what I mean? so it just epitomises exactly what what the two teams. The, the respect they have for each other and uh, and uh, the way the game is going to be played, it's going to be played out and heavy. And you know, if these boys get happy and start making them wee chinky runs, like it used to be Budgie McKenney years ago, oh, right, right. Yeah, and he took his head in between his shoulders and <laughs> run for a little. <laughs> and clans, clans, they got a late goal up night, Jimmy, yeah. they'll get a draw, and they've just continued that trend. They, they let a team ahead of them, and then yeah, back well, the. the, the well, as Joe would say himself, a team that keeps improving is, is, a, is a good sign, you know what I mean? And they have improved in every game, you know, so hopefully that, that continues. Their, their attitude has been excellent. Attitude has been excellent. And uh, as I said, it, it's, well, I, I don't think you'd be wrong in saying that it's more than hope than expectation because the Cross are certainly the favourites. Clan Iron are favourites. Cross are certainly favourites, you know, because of the players that they have, the O'Neills, and, and even rattling up, everybody knows them, you know what I mean? And their record speaks for itself. but the clans are great and they'll certainly give it their best there's no doubt about that and I think that, that draw against them in the first round that maybe gives the clans a wee bit of belief going into cross that uh, oh, absolutely the game yeah, yeah. Oh, very much so you know well, you, that's, that's the job of manager to instill the player like Joe talked himself about how you get teams lifted for matches you know and you, I don't think there'll need to be too much lifting done when you're making cross McLean in the championship final, you know and Joe just before we wrap up we'll get a few predictions from you um, how you see this game Going, we've spoke about the rivalry, how how big it is, how it'll last forever, as you say. Who do you see coming out on top here next Sunday? Like, you always go with the heart first, and uh, and the heart says we know we we have more room for improvement. We haven't played our best football yet, and I'm, I'm hoping Sunday will be the day that uh, they all turn up together. So we have scored and power. We're, we're good round the middle of the field. Defensively, we've been we've been shaky at times, but. You know, uh, hopefully they're working that over the next week or so. But uh, as always, one point and near hard that could do me. <laughs> what do you think, Timmy? You take on as well? <laughs> oh, oh, point anytime, anytime. The, the thing about Cross is Cross play a lovely brand of football. Yeah, you know, if you stand back and admire them, they'll destroy you. Mm -hmm. You know, because they they play it so simply. You know, you get the ball, they look up, 
let the ball go, man's free to give it to him. You know, that's, that's, that's the way that you play football. And uh, the clans will, will have learned from that. And, and they have actually changed their game slightly as well, that they're moving the ball a lot quicker. And both teams have scoring potential, there's no doubt about it. I would say a cross of has to be more than the clans. But then uh, we might get Subi doing another one of us. One man shows. I think we, we were talking on the podcast last week about the two standouts was probably Super Campbell and Oshin Lee yeah. from mm. last week's games. Like they were just, it's incredible to see them two boys in full flight, isn't it? Yeah, well, when Oshin breaks the tackle, yeah. you know, he, he makes up 20 yards and he can pop it over from anywhere. You know, the one man that hasn't come on fire yet is, is a, 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 a monkey, as I call him, Jim McCampbell. Uh, like he, he's lethal and we need to get more ball into him and that'll take a bit of pressure off Rian uh, so the two of them in there so, so that's the problem Rian was then surpassed by Oshin Oshin had been out of it for a while because yeah. Reggie said that and then he suddenly appears you know so and there'd be a bit of rivalry in the house there with the two boys you see too oh, I'm, I'm back now and I'm you know <laughs> I'm taking over which is exactly. every house has that but, we're definitely looking forward to it. We'll vote for Cross and a vote for Clans. Yeah. 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 I'm going to talk afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd say my vote for um, Thursday's show. We'll have a preview show. We'll talk about the ins and outs of the game, the matchups, and whatever else. But, Jimmy, Joe, thanks very much for coming on. Great to hear from you and great to reflect on a great rivalry. Thank you. Hello,